guys, this is Jan looking at the Marshall attack as always from the black side. And I'm quite happy to report that in the actual Marshall, black has been doing fine. Not that much has changed. White has not gone here all that often. And if they have nothing that could really shatter the world all that much. However, there is one variation which has become the clear main line in the Marshall after c3, d5. E takes d, knight takes d5, knight e5, knight e5, rook e5, and c6. All of this, the modern main line of the marshal. And here, one move has taken over. It's the move d3, which was always popular, but it wasn't quite the main move. Nowadays, if you see the marshal at top level, they almost always play the move d3, which is a testament to black's solidity in all the main lines after d4, bishop to d6. However, after d3, there have been some developments. Bishop d6, rook e1. And first of all, let's understand or remember the point of d3. If black goes queen h4 here, g3, queen h3, which looks very natural. Now white is a cute move, rook e4, which is a line in the same position with a white pawn on d4 instead of d3. But with a pawn on d3, there is no g5. Well, if the pawn was on d4, believe it or not, g5 is the best move here. Bishop takes g5 and queen to f5. This works with a pawn on d4. Does not work with a pawn on d3 because after queen f5 this rook is defended. It's not a double attack so white would just be winning here. Therefore, first of all, that's the whole reason why d3 is so popular. The stupid rook is defended on e4 in one line and therefore black has to play differently here. Or I think he has at least. Bishop f5. That's the move everybody and their dog plays. And after queen f3 is where it really gets interesting. This is the theoretical position. Queen h4 has long time been the main line. Nothing wrong with queen h4. I've never been a big fan because it felt to me like black has to know lots and lots of stuff just fighting for a draw, which is not that exciting of a premise. Queen f6 is my old recommendation. I was very happy in the old days when this was a novelty and I think it has been played quite a bit at the highest level. I still believe it's holding. However, nowadays I would not recommend it anymore because there is one small detail I'm afraid I have to inform you about. In the line knight to d2, all of this is best play and has been played plenty. Queen to g6, there white has the counterintuitive, but that's how it is often in the computer age. Move bishop to d1, stopping the threat of bishop g4. It turns out that black has nothing better here than going for an ending, which is tenable, but it's not a lot of fun. And my approach to the marshal has always been, let's try to keep the queens on the board, let's try to scare our opponents with a mating attack. Well, here after bishop d3, knight e4, this line is pretty much forest, takes, 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 takes. This has been played, it's by no means hopeless for black, material is equal again, but white has the two bishops and white is a little bit better. Main line is rook a8, takes, rook takes, king to f1. This has been played at the highest level, even games like Anand against Swidler. Black should draw, but it's not going to be all that much fun. Bishop to f4 is the move they used to play here. But here white has the pretty obvious novelty. Bishop takes, knight takes, bishop to f3. And it's going to be a fight for a draw. Probably one that black should win with accurate play, but that's not really the reason why I play the marshal to hold worse end games. So it's not a line I can recommend with such a clear conscience anymore. However, if you're willing to live with something like this, or instead of bishop f4, I believe bishop e5 has also been played, think, yeah, if that's the worst there is, then why not? I'll go for it. Then by all means do so. However, the surprise value of queen f6 is a bit gone. And it's not something I would fancy playing all day long. Levin Aronian always plays queen h4, arguably the biggest expert in this position. But if I were to get this position on the board again, I would now return to an old love of mine, the move rook to e8. The move which is a lot sharper, leads to crazy complications. And it has been played quite a bit in correspondence play, proving its soundness. If these correspondence guys can get away with it, it is most likely sound. I've played it twice with good result. I never fully trusted it, but if you go deep enough, it turns out that it's fine. 
And the really good news is it's a lot more fun. Rook takes e8 is kind of forced. Queen takes e8. And we already see Black's idea. He wants to deliver checkmate on the back rank. White stops that with a move. Bishop d2. He is very awkwardly placed. His pieces can't really get out. And after queen e6, it's already clear that Black has excellent play for his pawn. Queen can go to g6. Rook e8 will follow. There is nothing all that much to worry about. Even my ringing cell phone should not distract us from this position. So instead, after rook takes e8, queen takes e8, knight to d2 is the critical move and the move played here. Might look clumsy, but the knight wants to go to f1 and then continue development. Well, let's not forget that black also has some pieces hanging in his position. This is where the fun starts. You go queen e1 check, forcing knight f1, and now bishop to g6. And this is a position which I spent a lot of time analyzing. I don't think I can make this video six hours, so I won't share all of it in this video, but I will share the conclusions and the main lines. Critical move here is the move g3. There are alternatives, however. One of them is the move h3. Let's first point out that white black is threatening to go. Bishop takes h2, followed by queen takes f1. And white cannot really move these pieces. So both g3 and h3 parry that threat. h3 is best met by the move rook to e8. Nice active move. And white has to think about how he ever wants to get his queen side out. The way to go about this is the passive looking move bishop d1. Preparing to move the other bishop with bishop d2. At the same time stopping annoying rook e2 ideas. However, after bishop d1, black has a way to, I believe, force a draw, or at least force the issue very much, and it holds. The move knight takes c3. It's not forced, but it's nice. Pawn takes, queen takes c3. Attacking the rook, rook b1 is forced, and rook to e1, <clears throat> causing havoc on the first rank. One big point, of course, bishop d2 might look tempting. Not that good a move because rook f1, king f1, queen takes d3 check and we end up picking the rook on b1. All of this has been analyzed by smarter engines than me. Not sure that sentence made me sound all that smart either. Bishop f4 is the best move. Bishop takes, queen takes, threatening checkmate himself now. h6 and turns out white is clumsy enough that he will have to settle for a draw. The main line something like bishop c2, takes, takes, queen b2, once again forcing white to kind of obstruct himself, knight d2, and c5, threatening c4. White's extra piece will not give him more than a draw. So there already goes to show you there's quite some long forced analysis required to play this rook to e8 move. However, the positions that you get on the board are a lot more fun. And knight takes c3 is not forced if you don't feel like it. Alternatives are bishop takes d5, a move I have faced in practice. c takes d, queen takes d5. We're two pawns down at the moment, but this line is still not all that critical. Rook d8 has to be played to keep all the pieces, because white is not in time to finish development without giving up substantial material. The best move here is the move bishop g5, planning to exchange of rooks. Queen takes a1, bishop takes d8, but black is fine after bishop f8, just safeguarding his back rank, and now he is in time to start snacking, either with queen takes b2 or with queen b1, intending bishop to d3. And white is not better here. Main try is, I believe, the move h4, but you could argue about that. Black just makes room with h6, and he's not in time to cause us any problems. Bishop b6, queen takes b2 is the main line of some old analysis, I believe first done by Mr. Nataf. Queen a8, bishop takes d3, and black is totally fine. Instead, let's cut to the chase after knight f1, bishop g6. The critical move and the move played by all our correspondence friends is the move g3. When once again, white stops the threat of bishop h2 and is intending to slowly unravel with bishop d1 followed by bishop d2. So black has to keep him busy and the best way to do so is the move b4 in this position. Don't ask me to explain this. 
outside of it works for black. It does work for black. It creates a new front threatening b takes c3 and asks white to make a decision. Bishop takes d5 or the move c4. Bishop takes d5 once again is not very scary. It leads to a similar play to what we've just seen. Bishop g5, queen takes a1, takes bishop f8. Bishop a5, I believe this is a game of mine. Queen to b1 and black is going to be all right in the end. So this kind of forces the issue, but it's not dangerous. Instead, the critical move, which I also had on the board against Daniel Stellwagen a long time ago, is the move c4. Chasing this knight away, which was nice in the center, but also blocking his own bishop on b3. This is a position that has been analyzed very, very much. And at the end of the day, knight f6 is the best move. Knight c7 has also been discussed here, but knight c7, d4 favors white a little bit. Knight f6 is correct. When there is a forced sequence, white would have to find to even hope for an advantage. So I'd be, I'm willing to play this line all the time because I think even if White watched this video and then is not prepared for this line, he's not going to fight the following sequence. Queen takes c6 is the only try for an edge here. If you play a move like bishop d1, I think this is my old game, rook e8, black is already very comfortable, bishop d2, queen to e5, attacking this pawn, rook to b1, Bishop to c5, and we can see the black pieces are so active that white can never ever hope to be better here. And actually, he is in trouble of, <laughs> in danger of ending up worse. So once again, typical martial play, put your pieces on good squares and hope for the best. However, after knight of six, queen takes c6, this is the serious try. Rook to d8, and this is pretty much me reading out computer lines. I struggle to explain things. White is two pawns up, but he has serious trouble to finish development, and practically I would prefer to be black here. Objectively, it's also fine for black. After long forced lines, we reach actually a typical martial ending with white a pawn up and black having the two bishops, so it ends in a draw in correspondence chess on the highest level. But I don't expect any human opponent to get there without having serious, serious preparation done. And even that, there's nothing wrong with it. Rook d7, here for example, you have to find the quiet little move. Bishop to c2, only move to not be worse, I believe. Queen e3 looks more natural, but then rook e7. And if this rook manages to overtake the first rank, white will once again struggle. Bishop c2, I'll just briefly show you the line. Knight g4 exclamation mark, threatening all kinds of things once again. But it turns out white is just in time to play the move rook to b1 here. This is his plan to untangle. He wants to put this rook on a defended square, then go bishop d2 and slowly crawl out. So the <coughs> theory battle continues. Queen e2 is correct, attacking here. Bishop d2, only move, only good move. Knight to e5, knight finds new work. And white has to keep making very much only moves in this position. It is the move queen to e3. Just to show you what could go wrong. Bishop takes b4. Runs into queen takes c2. Bishop takes d6. Threatening mate. But black just goes h5. And his superiority on the light squares will win the day. Here. Queen takes d3. Black is fine. Bishop d2. Knight e5. This is where it really starts. Queen e3, queen h5. And <clears throat> I feel almost silly reading out this line. However, it is the correct line. It's hard to explain everything. Bishop to d1, best move. Queen to f5 and bishop to e2. And now white... Ah, actually, instead of bishop e2, there's also the move c5. <clears throat> which is based on a very cute trick. After bishop takes c5, white goes rook c1 takes rook c8 is the idea, mm -hmm. which is a nasty little idea, but c5 is best ignored with bishop to f8 and black will find time to feast on d3, bishop e2, rook d3, queen f4, rook d5, and the craziness continues. c5 not that critical, bishop e2 is the main try here and I've 
analyze around 18 moves in this position. The best one is the move f6, covering the e8 square and making Luft for the king while also defending this knight. And this is just me saying words to explain. This is the best computer choice. And black is holding. Practice players have played, once again I have like 18 moves here, but they've normally gone for one or another form of an ending like this one. Queen e4, queen takes e4, takes, bishop takes, rook to e1, knight f3 check, or knight d3, I'm not sure which one. Hmm. This is the kind of stuff you get in this line, which should end in a draw. However, it is <clears throat> quite a joyride to reach the position. I can't remember. I think knight d3 instead of knight f3 check is the correct way to handle this. Knight d3 takes, takes, b3, king f7. And these endings, they're all drawn because black has the active two bishops and white's extra pawn is not going to queen. I'm not going to lie, if I had to start the game in this position, I wouldn't be all that thrilled. But since this is move 32 and there is a myriad of complications and the position that arises is still very much drawish with careful play, I don't mind going here. After f6, queen e4 is by no means the only move. There is like 800 alternatives. Rook e1, queen f4, rook c1, b3, queen b6. Just reading out the main lines of my analysis. Black is holding in all the lines. It's all very, very complicated. But I do believe that it is at the very least a fun surprise choice against this very solid line with 12 d3. And I also believe that it could be objectively the best line in correspondence chess. Guys are holding this. You just have to check out a lot or be a very adventurous type. So bottom line, after queen f3, queen h4 is a move I've never paid that much attention to. It must still be holding. We've just seen Aronian play it against Rajabov. Make a draw. Queen f6 is certainly also holding, but if white knows this trick, bishop d1, which has been played by Caruana, amongst others, he will get a slightly better endgame, which is nothing I really fancy. No, sorry, this is the best move. When playing the marshal, so in order to at least make his way to the slightly better endgame a bit more thorny, I would recommend the surprise weapon rook to e8, which leads to crazy complications after takes, takes, knight d2, check, knight f1, bishop g6, and after g3, b4, both sides are in for a joyride, which is a position where you can spend a lot of time with computers. At the end of the day, black holds, but white has plenty of potential to go wrong. And I believe it's a very good practical choice. I hope you like it. If you don't make your choice between queen f6 and queen h4, they're both absolutely playable as well. Thank you for paying attention to this video. Bye. Hi, bye. this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.